Hello everyone, my name is Bruce Winter, and today we're going to talk about um, endpoint agent tools and, and installation of the endpoint agent. We're going to demonstrate uh, DLP version 14.6 MP1, and after we get that installed, we're going to talk about what to do and how to troubleshoot the client when you, um, and when it either won't connect to the consular anymore or is uh, exhibiting aberrant behavior. So you can see my lab here in the window. Um, so to install the agent, the first thing you want to do is you want to do here and, and go to agents and over and down to agent packaging. <laughs> and you have your window. We're going to demo installing a X64 agent. So we browse to where we have those install files at. And this is going to be the platform you extract from that you originally downloaded from File Connect with your serial number. So As you can see, we go to the downloads directory, and here is the agent, DLP, 14.6 MP1, endpoint, win, and here's your two architectures as you drill into that platform. We're going to use the x64 architecture. And this is the MSI file that we want to uh, tell Enforce to build a package with us for us. Okay, so that locks it in. It's pointed to that file. Then you want to either put in the uh, fully qualified domain name or the IP of the endpoint server that you want this agent to report into. In this case, we're going to use IP. That's going to be 192.168.2.100. Oops. There we go. And then the tools password. We definitely suggest a strong password, but for our cases here, we're just going to use protect because this is my lab and it's easy to deal with. This is going to be the installation directory on the Windows 7 endpoint machine by default. We really suggest that you leave it here at this, uh, at this path. If you change it, it can cause you some uninstall problems. Uh, you won't be able to use the uninstall agent 64.bat, and you also will have a lot of problems using the clean agent uh, tool as well, which is a brute force installer. The next field is the uninstall password key. This is built using a hex key generator. Um, it's been there ever since versions of old. <laughs> um, version 15 moving forward, this field is gone, and there's a reason for that. Um, this password generator tool created a long hex key that you had to save, um, like in a password save or something. And the challenge is, is that when people leave and new people come in, that information doesn't get passed down. And if you lose this uninstall password key, um, it's not a good place to be in. You're going to have to find a way to stop the agent service, the EDPA service, to be able to uninstall the agent with clean agent. Um, you're going to have to have the uninstall password if you want to use the uninstall agent script. So it creates a lot of problems. So for our demonstration, we're not going to use this. We're just going to go ahead and tell it to create the installer package. And it'll probably take it about 30 seconds to a minute to do that. Okay, there we go. So we're going to save that. And then I'm just going to jump over here to our downloads folder. And we're going to grab that and we're going to copy it over to our agent. And I already have that drive mapped to our agent. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, let's see here. Yes, we're going to go ahead and delete all this first. And add that. And we're going to copy this file in. As you can see, I've done this several times. We're going to go ahead and extract this. And here's our agent install package. And you notice we have three certificates here in the .pem format. This is why we build an agent uh, install package from the Enforce server, is because it takes the root certificate from the Enforce server and builds a private and public key and a trust store for the agent to securely communicate with the endpoint server. So if you were to install an agent from another Enforce server, it would not successfully communicate with the endpoint servers. So at this point, we can just go ahead and uh, open up administrative command line, jump back over to our Win64 agent. We've got a command line already open, and we're already in the correct uh, directory. So we can just go ahead and kick off install. 
underscore agent and it takes off and starts installing takes it probably anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute to install successfully um, now this is a something that you're obviously going to script for you people in larger environments and push it out to SCCM or Landesk or <clears throat> Alteris, whatever your middleware uh, software deployment tool is. And um, you wouldn't be running this locally. Uh, I want to stress that it's very important that whatever you use to push out that software, that it uses the local administrative account or uh, it's a system account to install the software. It's absolutely essential that this agent gets installed with local admin authority. Otherwise, there's just all kinds of problems that happen. Um, some DLLs don't copy it in. Sometimes the the registry doesn't get updated correctly. So, okay, it looks like we've got a successful install. We can verify that by bringing up Task Manager and sorting by process. And there's our there's our endpoint service running or executable. We can go to Properties. The details tab and it tells us that we have <clears throat> a 14.6 mp1 agent installed okay now at this point in time we can go ahead and we can uh, start uh, showing you how to run the um, use of on to sqlite but before we can do that we need to <clears throat> go back into the agent directory and grab the tools again in that platform that you downloaded from file connect with your serial number when you extract that um, in addition to the files that were there, there's also a tools folder. And you need to copy that tools folder over to the root of the installation drive on the endpoint agent. Inside that tools folder is the actual tools themselves. We want to copy those. And then we want to jump over to the installation directory, which by default, as I said, is program files, manufacturer, endpoint agent. And we want to go ahead and paste these in. And we just say copy and replace. And you're going to get this pop up, and that's because of um, permissions. All right, we go. And then it copies in all the files. So we can verify that, for example, by going to the S's and taking a look at for service underscore shutdown, which is the one of the first tools that we're going to use. And there it is right there. So now we can just go ahead and jump right over to that directory. And run the service underscore shutdown utility. And give it the password. In this case, it is protect. And it shuts down the agent. So for means of a little bit of training, <clears throat> the main operational log of the DLP endpoint agent is called EDPA underscore EXT zero dot log. And if it gets large enough, and it will, it will create an EXT one dot log. And the agent config <clears throat> by default, I think the it's it's, it's can get up to five megs and then what it does is it stops writing into that log and creates an ext1.log. <clears throat> now a couple of things this log is encrypted by default and um, it also is set at a debug level of info so what this means is when you have to troubleshoot an issue number one you can't look at it when it's uh, encrypted so we need to tell it to create unencrypted files log files and we also need to turn up the logging to debug level and there's three different debug levels, fine, finer, and finest. I use finest. Um, and yes, that does create a lot of verbose logging. But when I need to look at a lot of detail for agent uh, um, content extraction, uh, and exactly what happened with content extraction, then that information is there for me. So we do that by using a, a utility called Vontu SQLite 3. And we need, it, what, we need to tell it what database to, talk, to connect to. And we want to connect to the agent's configuration database. And 
That is called cg.ead. And then it's got to connect, so we need to give it the password again. And now we're in a SQLite command. At this point in time, we are in a de facto Oracle SQL command structure. So if you know anything about equal, uh, C, excuse me, Oracle, you know that their SQL commands have to be suffixed by a semicolon. So any update statements, delete statements, select statements, they all have to be suffixed by a, a, a semicolon. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the logs to be deobfuscated uh, de or unencrypted. Um, Obfuscate is Von um and DLP's term for encrypted logs. So we're going to run an update statement. Um, follow along. So we got to we got to change a value. So we're going to set value equals, and all these values are prefaced and closed with a single tick. So normally, to encrypt the logs, the value would be 1, so we're going to set it to 0 to tell it to create unencrypted logs. And then we've got to tell it where that setting is. And single tick again, obfuscate. And we subsequent with a semicolon, hit enter. And we've now told it it's going to create unencrypted logs. We also, as we talked about, need to turn up the logging to a debug level. So we'll do that now. Follow along. And that level will be finest. Close that with a single tick. Where setting equals single tick. And even though the setting is info, in this particular record in the configuration database, it is default level. Close it with a semicolon. And now we've told it to create unencrypted logs. And we've told it to turn up logging to the finest debug level, which is finest. <clears throat> so now for clarity, what I do is I go in here and I take this existing ext0.log and I rename it to log.back. This way, when we start up the EDPA service, it's going to create a fresh, finest level, debug level, unencrypted log. So let's just jump back over here to our administrative command line. We're going to exit out of SQL. Oh, didn't like that. Control C it. There we go. And we're going to start up the uh, service. So, All right. And then it just creates a, just created a new log right there. And we're going to give it a minute, and then we'll go in and take a look at it. And we're also going to look at it with Notepad++. For those of you that are new to the log debugging game, uh, you don't ever want to do this with Notepad or WordPad. Notepad is just too confusing. You can't; It's not formatted. You can't separate it out. And WordPad, it, WordPad can add formatting that you have to be really careful of. So here we go. We've got a, a clear text, finest level log where we can search for issues. So for instance, if we wanted to see if there were any warnings in here, we'd hit the binoculars, type in warning, and find all in current document. And we've already got a couple of them. Okay, it's told us that the battery is low, or power status changed, or power setting has changed. And it's also told us that the watchdog service is started by the agent. So let's talk about that real briefly. The DLP endpoint agent has tamper proofing, and we do that by a separate service called Watchdog, WDP.exe. So if you try to stop the EDPA service without using the service underscore shutdown utility, it'll stay off for just a second, and it'll start right back up again. And that's because the Watchdog service starts it back up. If you go over and try to stop the Watchdog service, it'll stop for a second, and then EDPA will start it back up. So that's our version of tamper proofing. It's very difficult to stop services of the DLP agent, and that's by design. So let's say that um, let's say that you the agent won't connect to the console. It's not showing up in the console, or it's showing up in the console, but it shows not reporting. So for that, you have to troubleshoot the connection and figure out if it's talking to the endpoint agent server. So the easiest way to do that is hit the binoculars again and type in the IP or the fully qualified domain name of the um, endpoint server, which would be this one. 
find all in current document, and there we go. This is the first time that it tries to connect, and the thing I like about Notepad++ is you can double click on this, and it takes you right to where it is in the log and tells you what's going on. Take a look at the next one, right there. This is where it's trying to connect to the endpoint server through port 10443. Click at the next one. Initiating connection with server. So it times out with the full equality with that, and then it tries to rebuild the URL. Um, then it talks with the um, with the SSL certificate, and then eventually it will. This is the whole path when what it does. So again, um, if the agent won't, if you don't find this and it won't connect to the endpoint server, then the other option that you can do is you can come in here and you can search for libcurl, which is the errors that you get when the certificates are wrong. And there you go. And it did have some of that problem. And then it finally did connect using TLS version 1.2, AES 128 SHA. So by default, it's TLS 1.2 at uh, the 28 um, advanced encryption level. You can change that to 256, but you have to build your own custom certs. And that discussion will be outside the, the scope of this uh, training video. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can do with the agent. You can change all kinds of configuration settings. Um, let's go back into Vontu SQLite 3 here. Okay, so let's say that we want to change something in the configuration database, one of the records. Well, first you have to get those records up on the screen, so we do. Semicolon, and there's all the configurable settings inside the configuration database. Now we don't really suggest that you monkey with any of these unless you're directed to by a backline support technician, your uh, TAM, or a uh, customer centric engineer. So if you have something that you want to change in here, I would highly suggest or you, you, you call your premium support contact and they'll create a case for you and roll it up to the proper people to handle those uh, problems for you. Or if you want to customize it to work how you want, you can, all, you can do some of that right in here. You can do it directly. This Vontu SQLite 3 is a very powerful utility. Uh, you don't have to, it's there for, um, to be able to unencrypt the logs and be able to RDP to a workstation and manipulate the agent if you want to. And sometimes you need to, if for some reason it's lost connection with the Enforce console. So that would conclude our little training for today. Um, I hope that you found this useful. Um, my, again, my name is Bruce Winter. I'm a, a principal technical account manager for the premium customer support DLP team for Symantec. And anytime that you have any questions for me or you would like to go into this further, um, please feel free to reach out to me through your premium uh, support contact. And um, they'll get the message to me and I'll return your call. So again, I hope this was useful. I really enjoyed um, presenting this video today and have a good day. Thank you.